Difficult GCSE Maths Questions, Episode 3. We're doing a bit of ratio today. In specific, I found a little topic within ratio called direct and inverse proportionality. So I've got a question here. I reckon it's sufficiently horrible, so let's kind of give it a read. So it says, when y is 25, x is 20. When x is 4, z equals 192. Given that x is directly proportional to the square root of y, and z is directly proportional to the cube of x, find the value of z when y equals 36. Okay, it's obviously a lot going on here. A good four lines of just words. So it's all about really breaking this paragraph, this chunk of text, down sentence by sentence. And as we go, try and convert each sentence into maths. If you can change a sentence into an equation, it makes your life a lot easier because you know you kind of cashed in that sentence. Cross it out if you want, and then you can just work with the equations that you have. So, I'm going to skip the when y is 25x equals 20, when x is 4z equals 192 for now. And I want to focus on this second sentence. It says, given that x is directly proportional to the square root of y. So stop there, I don't even want you to read the rest. What does that mean? So for something to be directly proportional to something, so you can write it like this. So I know a bit of notation for you here, this little fish essentially means directly proportional to. And in terms of an equation, that means that x is equal to some number times y. So this number, we call it the following, get ready for this one, the constant of proportionality. Basically what it means is, right, take your y value, times it by this number, and then you get your x value. Now, this number we're going to work out, and that's what you're going to have to do when you're answering proportion questions. As soon as you have this, you usually call it k, this constant of proportionality, you're good, because then you have an equation that just tells you x in terms of y. So in our case, x isn't directly proportional to y. x is directly proportional to the square root of y. In other words, in our case, x is k. Again, that's the directly proportional to bit, but instead of y, square root of y. Fantastic. So that's one equation that I've kind of cashed in. Let's carry on. Z is directly proportional to the cube of X. So same thing, right? Z directly proportional to means is equal to K times, in this case, the cube of X, X cubed. Is there anything wrong that I've done here? Yes. Be careful. You might be very used to, you know, just saying, okay, constant of proportionality K, which is completely fine. However, in my specific case, I'm going to want to use a different letter because these k's aren't the same. I'm going to have to work out these two numbers differently. In other words, just use something that isn't k, right? Whatever you want. I honestly don't really care. Why don't we call it p? Doesn't matter. As long as it's just a letter that's not being used elsewhere. So that is one way that I can see students messing up on this question. They might get one value of k, get confused. So just, you know, these constant of proportionality, constants of proportionality even, are different. Okay, so essentially what we've done is we've cashed in all of this middle bit of information about the proportionality bits. So what do we do now? We need to find these constants of proportionality. So how are we going to do that? You tend to get given pairs of values, because when we get these pairs of values, we can sub them into the equation. So now I'm going to bring your attention to this first sentence. When y equals 25, x equals 20. That right there, before I even carry on reading, I can use that. Because look, we have a relationship between x and y here. So I can sub in these values of x and y. So here I'm going to say, well, 20, which is the x value, is equal to k times the square root of 25, which is that y value. Well, the square root of 25 is... <laughs> Forgot to speak then, we'll leave that one in there. So the square root of 25 is 5, right? So I'm going to get 5k. So now I've got an equation for k, divide both sides by 5 to get k is 4. Fantastic. Can't speak, but I can do maths. Now, basically, we just do the same thing, but with x and z, because we've got my k, but we need to get this p. So let's have a look. It says when x equals 4, z equals 192. Exactly the same thing. I'm going to sub 192 in for my z value. It's going to equal p multiplied by 4 cubed. Cool. So 
work it out. So four cubed happens to be 64. If you don't know that, don't worry about it, use your calculator. I'm gonna be lazy and use my calculator here. Although it's gonna be, it's gonna be three, isn't it? Well, let's just prove it. So 192 divided by 64, we get three. If you're ever in doubt, check the calculator. So P is gonna be three. Cool, so are we done? Well, not quite, are we? Because we still need to work out the actual thing that the question's asking us for. So we've got our constants of proportionality. So just to kind of consolidate all of that, I just wanna rewrite our equations now. So x equals k root y, but we know k, so it's four times the square root of y. And z is equal to three x cubed. So this right here is now basically where we're at. This is the important bit here because now we just have relationships between these variables. So it's now super easy to just say, oh, what's x when y is 10? Sub it in. What's z when x equals 20? Sub it in. Okay, so what do we want? We want the value of z when y equals 36. Okay, so there's one thing that I'm noticing. We don't have a relationship directly between z and y, do we? The only link here is this x, because if you think about it, x is related to y, and then x is related to z. These two aren't directly related to each other, but given that we have this middleman x, then we're all right, aren't we? Because if you think about it, I've got this y value. Why don't I use that y value to find the x value, and then that x value to find the z value? And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So, y is 36, just straight in, I go what? x is going to equal four times the square root of 36. This is why it's so useful once we have these constants of proportionality. You just sub the numbers in, you sweep. Square root of 36 is six, so I'm gonna get four times six. I'm gonna get 24. I've got my x value now, just do the same thing. Inject this right into here. So z at this point is going to equal three times by 24 cubed and I am Definitely gonna use the calculator for that one. So three times 24 to the power of three gets me this old number here, 41,472. It's not pretty, but it's right.